if anything, I like being the most real car guy on YouTube. Oh God, when all Porsche people are gonna hate my guts and like ridicule me for all eternity. I don't care, have fun. <laughs> What's up, people? Okay, so continuing the Porsche saga, I have made two mistakes. <laughs> One mistake which has made it that I need to work on this car in 33 degree weather and sleep, which you're about to find out what it is. For those of you who have followed this and see the tool that I make, this will be a clue to my mistake. So come on over here and I'll show you what I did wrong and why. Because you should learn from it. Here, look out. Switch. So come on over. Okay, first thing, and this happened the night I was gonna drive it home, the first night. This is the upper radiator hose, and the one that was originally on this car was in good condition, but it was kind of formed stupid, and it went far over here and then curved, rather than this one that hugs the radiator tight and comes in. And the problem with that is, and you probably can't see it, the alternator in here is the old school kind. I don't think you can see it down in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't worry about it. The alternator is the old school kind, where instead of just having a pulley, it also has a big like flywheel cooler on it, and I kind of forgot those exist when I put it on. I'm like, oh, it's nowhere near the pulley. Yeah, it was no, nowhere near the pulley, but that flywheel thing was cutting a hole in it. <laughs> so uh, all of a sudden I'm like, why is there smoke and things are wet? So I didn't drive it home that night. Anyway, so replace the hoses, which actually this is a good example of 944s. This hose and the funky one here, I was able to order at a local auto parts chain store. And one was like $14 and the other was $8. Okay, so for idiots out there like, parts are hard to find and they're expensive for this. You're an idiot, okay? So now, what did I screw up? It relates to the timing belts and everything. So here's how I did this. Remember, I didn't want to use any manual. Okay, well, that's not necessarily a mistake as long as two things work out. One, the last person that worked on this didn't do something wrong and set it up wrong for you to put it back to wrong. And two, something doesn't change that you don't realize in the middle. So what happened was camshaft, camshaft timing's perfect. All the timing marks, everything are lined up perfect, turns over, Idles perfect, runs perfect, makes great power. Except, I had this kind of weird like harmonic and I'm like, what the heck? And I drive and I'm like, what, what? I don't remember it being this crappy. What's going on? Yeah, one of the balance shafts is 180 degree off. And I'm gonna show that to you how that happened right now. Because when you put the pulley back on, which I'm about to remove, give me one moment here. When you put the pulley of the balance shafts back on, there's an indicator. And if you read a manual, you would have I would have known. Um, and a buddy of mine, what's up, Ryan? Try and tell me. I'm like, I just put it back the way it was. No big deal, dude. I'm not gonna listen to you. And so now all these people are laughing at me. Haha, ha, Casey's an idiot. Whatever, at least I'm admitting. So <laughs> let me remove this right now. Of course I gotta lose some attention. Looking forward to taking this off and showing it to you. Oh my goodness. This is fun. Oh, by the way, for all the pit people out there, they're like, Casey's a rich guy. He just buys stuff, and that's why he does all these things. And I don't like him. Yeah, I'm a rich guy, because that's why I'm here now in the south of France in this beautiful weather, lying on my back in sleep with my old tools, fixing a four shot. Okay, hold on. Okay, enough rain in case you just get it done. God damn it, break loose, jerk. Okay, come on. Okay, whatever. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, right? Oh, man. Honey, we need to move somewhere warm. My wife is video recording this. She is concurring. But she has a chic looking De Tomaso umbrella that was a gift from somebody. Show them our umbrella, honey. Yeah, that's cool, right? De Tomaso. Those cars used to be fun before the baby boomers and car auctions inflated the prices beyond normal human beings. Oh, Casey's on a rant. He's on a tirade again. Okay, let's see. Did I really screw this up? Oh yeah, yeah, I screwed that up. Okay, I gotta get off of there. Come on, where is it? People like Casey why are always speaking negatively about baby boomers, and I'm like, because they inflate the price of old cars and make it so no young people can enjoy them, and I find that to be annoying and disappointing. And the reason why I like this 944. Are you gonna slide off of there? You so-and-so. Oh. I almost got it off, people. You're gonna enjoy seeing this. 
in, revel in my misery. Ah! Oh, it's a beautiful thing. There's so many people out there that are happy right now. So I'm just trying to get this behind the pulley. Oh, there it comes. Give me some sugar. Come on, you jack wagon. Oh, here we go. Hooray, hooray. Oh, I did put marks on it. Oh, fascinating. Wait, hold on. I gotta see if I screwed this up or not. Okay. I learned a bunch of things I gotta show you guys. Okay, so come here. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so this is a pulley off of both, what do you call them, vibrators? The uh, balance shafts, that's what Porsche people call them. Okay, so there's balance shafts in there, they have an eccentric and they balance and cancel out the weird harmonics of this big four cylinder engine. So, presumably both these pulleys are identical, but the problem is they need to do slightly different things depending on which shaft they're on. This is the one on the bottom. Now the O stands for like over, so the O, is the one that's important for the one on the top. And then on the earlier pulleys, which this apparently isn't, there's a U. And when you assemble it, you see how there's two Woodruff key spots here, one and two. Um, the, there's only one Woodruff key on the shaft, okay? So the Woodruff key that fits in that keyway on the upper balance shaft, or the over, goes into this slot. And then the one for the bottom goes into this slot. And how you know if it's right or wrong. So there's this little tang here. And the tang can only slide into the keyway that doesn't have the Woodruff key. And when I looked at the bottom, see how the O is visible? And the two things line up? It shouldn't be that way. That's the way is proper for the top. If I would have put this in correctly, and the Woodruff key went in this one for the bottom one, then this tang would have been here. And then the O is visible through the square hole, which is the way it's supposed to be on the bottom. So what happened is, these aren't exactly 180 degrees off, but the harmonics that I experienced with this being 180 degrees off was actually worse than if there were nothing in here at all. So it sucked. But fortunately, it doesn't hit anything or hurt anything, and I could tell right away, and I think anybody who knows anything about cars would be like, there's something wrong, it buzzes a lot. So I fixed it, and it's cold, and I'll never do that again. And I just want you guys to know that two things. One, um, this is that thing where like a high school coach or somebody's gonna be like, uh, you know what happens when you make assumptions? <laughs> you make an ass out of you and me. Mostly me. And um, I assumed that it was together correctly before I barely drove this car. I like literally drove it around the block slowly at night and it had a horrible squealing belt when I bought it. So I don't know if it was correct then or not. Um, let's say it was correct then and I screwed up. And then what happened was when I took everything off, I didn't actually mark, well, no, that can't be right either. Cause I, okay, hold on. We're gonna find out right now if I screwed this up because I missed something or if it was screwed up before because I marked it and the marks are still there. Hold on, I'm gonna find out right now. Am I an idiot or am I only kind of an idiot? Oh no, it appears I'm an idiot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> damn it. Casey. Okay, well, the balance shaft moved and I presumably didn't pay close enough attention to the markings when I put it back together. So I'm just gonna put it back together correctly right now and uh, you Porsche snobs can laugh at me. I don't care. <sighs> okay, now it's going back on. So I'm gonna put this back on and retention the belt here in the driveway, which at the very least, I think proves what a great car this is, that a reasonable human being can work on it in the driveway. And uh, I tell you what though, on the drive home, oh my gosh, there were so many things that were great about this car. It was quiet, the shifter feel was better than like a modern era 911 or Boxer. It just, it had so many good things going for it that I'm really looking forward to driving this. And in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys I'm gonna drive it and we're gonna drive around and see what it's like for a real world car. And now it's not even gonna be all vibrating. Oh God, when all Porsche people are gonna hate my guts and like ridicule me for all eternity. I don't care, have fun. Oh yes, it's a beautiful evening in Ohio in January. And the night is not over yet. <laughs> oh, you know, they do say misery loves company. <laughs> so I had to keep you all coming along for this journey. Why did I throw that in there? There's a big puddle. I could literally float a boat in there right now. You know, it's really cold. There's still snow outside. 
So you guys can probably guess the temperature. And the fact that it's raining and cold is not much fun. So uh, I took the spark plugs out so I could turn it over and it's night because I didn't have any big sockets at home or anything to turn the motor over to put the thing at, at top dead center. So then when I got home, I realized I gotta take the spark plugs out. Fortunately, I had the original Porsche toolkit. I know, snobs, it's got the original Porsche toolkit. Wow. Yeah, I'm being sarcastic. People get crazy about that. Anyway, I've got nothing to gaff these spark plugs with, so I'm using my Swiss Army knife and I'm sort of just judging by its taper where to do that. I don't know, there's some mechanics that are like, oh, Casey sucks, he doesn't even have spark plug gapping tools. Well, this is modern era. People don't gap spark plugs that often anymore. And they're not bad from the factory. Anyway, Casey, where are you going with this? You are taking up my time on YouTube, man. I don't really know where I'm going with it. I just thought I'd bring this along because, if anything, I like being the most real car guy on YouTube. I know I've got like the flying pterosaur and the turbine Batmobile and a bunch of other fantastical, absurd things, but this is actually my life. This is, this is what I do. And that's a bloody knuckle. So, you know, that's fun too. So, Anyway, oh, blood makes poor mortar, Casey. Ooh, it's getting biblical and cold out here. I, uh, I thought I'd keep going. You know, I could wait till tomorrow when it was light out, but tomorrow I've got to go to Detroit to volunteer my time to teach, teach a bunch of kids science, technology, engineering, and math with the slot car program. And I got to stay up stupid late tonight going through applications for Genius Garage and the Lycan build. So I really don't have any time to wait on this car and fixing it. So here I am at night up by the Great Lakes, cold, working on a car. As I'm sure a lot of you out there have had to do in your lives. And maybe if you haven't, you can at least appreciate what it's like to be a real car guy, you flappy paddle posers. Anyway. I love making fun of people with paddle shifting. I hate paddle shifting. Okay, so anyway, um, I don't know you guys, I just hope you enjoy the channel and what I've been trying to do with this. I don't mind showing my mistakes in the reality of this because, you know, this is real. So for anybody younger out there thinking about getting your first car, sure you can take it to a shop and spend money and have it fixed, but when you work on your own cars, you'll have times like this. You could wait, and this really isn't so bad. I mean, it's cold out. Oh, and for the people that give me crap about wearing a leather jacket when I was washing my car, I don't really get that because the jacket's waterproof, or at least for a while it's waterproof. Plus the whole point of wearing this is so I can roll around on the ground and get dirty and not get beat up and hurt. It's not a fashion thing, it's a function thing. Anyway, but it is cold out here. So, I don't know. I don't know if I have anything that's super intelligent or cool to say. But I do enjoy this 944. When I drove it home yesterday, even with this stupid balance shaft way off and it running stupid. It was still really enjoyable. It shifted great, it felt great, the clutch modulated great. The engine was pleasant and ran beautifully. And it was quiet inside. The fuel pump was oddly kind of loud, but um, it was really pleasant. It had great visibility outside. And um, I just I just really enjoyed it. And the thing that I think is neat about this car is that it's from 1983. God, it's about as old as I am now. It's an old car. And all I did, bought this thing for $3,000, right? And it's got a little over 100,000 miles. So we replaced the gasket, did the timing belts and rollers and basic ignition stuff here, and new tires, and bled the brakes and changed all the fluids. Man, I gotta be honest. The thing feels like a brand new car. I mean, okay, like, I don't know, a couple of things. There was some little rattle. I think it was the crap I had in the trunk, like a little buzz. Um, but it really did, you guys. It felt like a brand new car. And it ran perfectly. There's no weird noises. The oil pressure's great. It cooled. And I think that's fascinating because there is no way a new car, like, you know, I beat up on those recently, beat up on those newer Mercedes, or that Lexus, when it's this age, <laughs> when 900 years old, you reach look this good, you will not. Mm, yeah, it's kind of like the truth. I know that old 
timers always say, they don't make them like they used to. Well, you know, there's something to that because they never make them like they used to. But in this circumstance, this Porsche was built at a time which made a lot of sense because it balanced, see, this is 1983, but it has electronic fuel injection on it. It was pretty advanced, so, and it still works great and is relevant today. And uh, it's simple enough that it's going to stand the test of time, if you understand what I mean, because the more complex cars get, most especially with the nature of electronics, they will break, they will fail. The electronics will fail. And the cars being built right now with so many systems, electric, hydraulic, et cetera, computer, 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 genuinely doesn't make any sense for the world or for you and me. It's a lot of expense, it makes no sense. As an example, basically everybody has cell phones and they're advanced and they're intelligent and they change all the time. So why are people spending money on new cars with garbage navigation systems in it. How about we just don't have that crap in a car? How about you just give us climate control that works with like mechanical switches and stuff that'll work forever that costs less? Because we've got cell phones. We don't need the technology in a car to spend all the money in something that's just gonna break down and be a pile of garbage and not last. And genuinely, I, I swear to God guys, I'm not just being an old coot here. When are we going to wake up and stop buying crappy new cars that won't stand the test of time. They're not any better. They're just not. This 944, you know, I could do a few things to give, make it even more creature comfort if I wanted to. The air conditioning still works. Like everything still works. All I have to do is maintain it reasonably. But you know, I don't know, I could give a little more sound editing or something if I wanted to give it some more creature comforts. And where I'm going with this is, I could drive this car for the next 40 years, assuming the world doesn't change that much. And let's say like gasoline becomes some crazy tax thing and you can't have that. You can convert this to electric. I can yank out this drivetrain and put in an electric motor and battery packs and stuff. And it's still a great car. And you know, if you go beyond that too, it's better looking than the crap nowadays because of stupid regulations, DOT regulations, bumper heights, and I was like, oh, Casey, you gotta have safety and crash protection standards. Well, first of all, how about you not get in a wreck? and stop being a horrible driver. But beyond that, it's fine. It's fine, it's a good car and it's beautiful. Like sitting in the driveway, I was driving by, I'm like, that thing looks amazing. The Porsche Boxster that we're gonna uh, dismantle for the Lycan build at Genius Garage, is a newer car and it's good looking and it drives well and people like it, blah, 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 it's really cool. Um, but by comparison, it's boring looking. You know, this thing, this 944, is a good looking automobile to this day. So I guess I'm just bringing it up because I think cars and transportation history in our industrialized world is a fascinating thing. And I think we live in a fascinating time because so many things are getting beyond overly complex for no reason. And certainly not for the betterment of people or the environment or manufacturing. It seems to me that the automotive industry has already hit its antithesis, and now they're just clinging to whatever straws they have, trying to get you to buy new cars and throwing all this whiz-bangy garbage at it, and uh, financing things for nothing, or raking you over the coals at dealerships and stuff for service, and it doesn't make sense anymore. We've already built enough cars for everybody. Commuting culture is, is going away. You, you sh with the nature of computers and, and work, we don't have to drive as much as we used to in many ways. So, what I'm saying is, a car like this means so much more than just an old sports car. There's something going on here, majorly culturally and over the world, you guys. And I'm really enjoying having this car and keeping it up and driving it, and I want to keep it because, I don't know, to me it's symbolic of something. It's some symbolic of the simplicity of where we need to be as a culture and a world and going forward. And not just producing crap as consumers for no good reason. And I think it's time we all look at cars again and the value of them. So in the meantime, I'm gonna get back to this very cold, frigid evening fixing my car and uh, 
going from there. When people are like, oh, that's stupid. I'm gonna get a new car with a warranty and look at this cold. He's working on it cold. Yeah, I'll be happy to have a couple of cold nights than to not lose money hand over fist so the world can keep producing brand new cars that do nothing for our future. That's what I got to say. And I'm looking to take you all for a drive in this nice old Porsche 944. I hope naturally you guys will share, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.